welcome to csc guru in this session we will discuss the next topic under operating system that is computer system architecture and in the computer system architecture we are going to discuss the different categories of computer system based on number of processors so the categories include single processor system multi processor system multi core systems and clustered systems so in this session we will discuss about the single processor and multi processor systems in the next session we will discuss about the multi core and clustered systems single processor system as the name implies the computer system will consist of only one processor or cpu so since it consists of only one processor the system can able to execute only one task at a time we cannot able to execute multiple task so if you are assigning one task to the computer system we have to wait the user has to wait till it completes the task once the assigned task is completed in the sense we can able to assign the next task so at a time the computer system can able to execute only one task but these computer systems will have other special purpose processors that is device specific processors like keyboard disk controller graphics controller io processors etc all these special purpose processors are utilized to execute read and write operations accessing memory storing data with memory likewise and these special purpose processors will run only limited instruction set and they do not run user processors and this single processor system is completely managed by the operating system next is multi processor system this multi processor system is otherwise called parallel systems or tightly coupled system as the name implies these multiple processor systems will consist of many processors in single computer system here two or more processors shares the computer bus and sometimes the clock memory and even peripheral devices also initially they introduced the multi processor servers only then it has been migrated to desktop and laptop systems recently multi processor systems have appeared on even mobile devices like smartphones and tablet computers also so since it consists of many processors we can able to execute many tasks at a time so for each cpu we can able to assign individual task so at a time it can able to execute more task so this is the main advantage of multi processor system compared to the single processor system in case of single processor system at a time only one task we can able to assign and execute in multi processor system since it consists of many processors we can able to assign many individual tasks to each cpu and we can able to complete many tasks at a time the advantages of multi processor system if you are considering in the sense increased throughput economy of scale and increased reliability so increased throughput in the sense since it consists of many processors we can able to complete more task in less time economy of scale if you are considering in the sense it costs less than the equivalent multiple single processor system so single processor system if you are considering in the sense the computer system will consist of only one processors other peripheral devices attached to this computer system will be utilized by only one processor but in case of multi processor system many processors will share the same peripheral devices so the cost is less because they share the peripheral storage and power supplies and increased reliability since we are distributing many work among several processors if there is a failure in one processor will not halt the system at all only it can slow down if one processor fails in the sense the task will be taken up by the other processors after completing its task the failed processor task will be taken up by the other processors so it will not halt the complete system it will only slow down the work process okay so these are all the advantages of multi processor systems the increased reliability of a computer system is crucial in many applications one is graceful degradation what do you mean by graceful degradation in the sense the ability to continue providing the service proportional to the level of surviving hardware if one processor fails in the sense still it can able to continue and execute the task by assigning it to the other processors so the ability to provide the continuity of service without any halt that is possible in multi processor system and fault tolerant in the sense some systems go beyond graceful degradation graceful degradation means work will be slowed down because of the failure of any one of the processor okay sometimes it will go beyond graceful degradation because 
they can suffer failure of any single component and still it can continue providing the operation that is called fault tolerant that is with some fault also it can able to continue its service and complete the task that is called fault tolerant and fault tolerance requires a mechanism to allow the failure to be detected diagnosed and if possible it should be corrected and there are two types of multiprocessor system. One is asymmetric multiprocessing and symmetric multiprocessing. So, asymmetric multiprocessing in the sense here, each processor will be assigned a specific task. How many number of processors will be there? For each processor, we will assign a task. And among the available processors, one processor will be considered as the boss processor. And that processor will control the complete computer system. And the other processors either look to the boss for instruction or have predefined task. And this scheme is called boss worker relationship. So, the boss processor will only monitor the other processors whether it is assigned a task, whether it is executing properly or not. Just a monitoring job will be done by the boss processor. And other worker processors will be assigned a task and they will do its execution process. And the boss processor only will schedule and allocate work to the work processor. That is asymmetric multiprocessing. And in symmetric multiprocessing, if you are considering in the sense, each processor will perform all tasks. Whatever the available task is there, whichever the processor it is free, for that processor task will be assigned. It will accept and execute those tasks. So, here all processors are equal. So, there is no boss worker relationship between the processors. All processors will be considered as a peers and they will have equal responsibility. And each processor will have own set of registers as well as private and local cache memory. And they will share even physical memory also. For example, AIX system. So, this is a commercial version of Unix system. Here it employs dozens of processors that will run simultaneously and execute the task. And all modern operating systems including Windows, Mac, Linux now provide support of SMP. SMP is symmetric multiprocessing system. So, this is the structure of symmetric multiprocessing. So, this is processor 0, processor 1, processor 2 likewise and each processor will have its own registers and cache memory and all processors will share the common memory. So, whenever you are assigning a task, this processor will execute an individual task and this processor will execute individual task and this also will execute individual task. So, at a time here, three tasks we can able to assign to the computer system and it will complete those tasks. And here, all the processes will be considered as peers. So, they will have equal responsibility. Whenever one processor fails or some trouble with one processor in the sense, once these processors complete its assigned task, it will overcome the failed processor task. So, that is the main advantage of symmetric multiprocessing. So, the main difference between symmetric and asymmetric multiprocessing results with either hardware usage or the software usage. So, special hardware we can able to install to differentiate the multiprocessors or you can install the software also to allow one processor as boss and other processors will be considered as the multiple workers. For example, Sun Microsystem Operating System that is Sun OS version 4 will provide the asymmetric multiprocessing and version 5 Solaris is symmetric on the same hardware. So, same hardware itself we can able to utilize as a symmetric as well as asymmetric multiprocessing also. And the multiprocessing will add CPUs to increase the computing power. Whenever it is required, you can add additional CPUs also. If CPUs have integrated memory controller, then CPUs also increase amount of memory in the system also. That is also possible. And even in multiprocessing system, the memory access model will differentiate the uniform memory access to non-uniform memory access system also. So, uniform memory access, if you are considering in the sense, the accessing time to access the RAM from CPU, it will access with the same amount of time. In non-uniform memory access, some parts of memory may take longer to access the other parts. Here, there may be a performance penalty that will be overcome by the operating system resource management. So, this is all about single processor and multiprocessor systems. Thank you for watching this video.